podcast stuff. Hey, what's up? So I was just going through my insane backlog, humble brag, you know. But uh, I was amazed to discover that I never got around to opening my Battle Across Time figures. So let's do that, right? And hey, you know, just for you guys, I'll throw in a bonus Rhinox figure. Since he's probably never going to get a repaint at this rate, you know. Um, <laughs> I mean, unless that thing happens that I tweeted about, which I would be totally into. Like, imagine a big, gassy, pissed-off Rhino Man charging down fools on the racetrack. Legendary stuff, right? But yeah, let's get him out of the way first, right? So first up, Kingdom Rhinox. His box is looking pretty scuffed, but you know, it's probably my fault, right? Still though, it's uh got all the Kingdom flares here and there. The angry Rhino Man on the front, the robot portrait on the side, renders on the back. It's classic stuff. Out of the box, he's looking pretty good. He's uh not what I would consider great, but he's doing his best, right? Like, look at this arm articulation. It swings up and out. It rotates at almost the same joint. And then this whole arm assembly can just swing forward and back. It's not bad per se. It just kind of feels like it was designed by someone who's never seen an arm before, right? Like, look at this articulation. Oh, sorry, we did that already. <laughs> But also, like, entirely no hate to whoever designed this, right? Their job was to make working humanoid arms that could easily and efficiently convert into rhino legs. So it's not the easiest thing in the world, right? The head sculpt has been absolutely shit on by pretty much everybody, uh, but it doesn't really bother me. I see Rhinox in there just fine. He's got two very small Gatling guns, and he looks pretty good with them. He's got some pretty sweet shoulder freckles, and his lower legs are kind of a mess, right? I kind of don't know what they were going for. There's, like, no inner structure. Sure, it's all plates. Uh, I don't know. His feet are weird, but you know, they get the job done. His chest mouth is pretty good. It feels kind of like a classic super robot chest plate. Articulations are right. Uh, nothing's loose or floppy. It all just kind of feels slightly counterintuitive. Rhino mode's pretty beefy. It's definitely not the worst Rhinox there's ever been, but I don't know. Here he is with some other figures, and here he is with a handful of Rhinoxes. Not too bad, right? Anyway, on to the Battle Across Time shit. Here we go. Next up, the Sideswipe box. Beautiful box art, beautiful inner tray, beautiful figures. Let's do Sideswipe first. Um, so he's looking pretty good. Nice poppy red. Compared to the Siege one, he's uh, much brighter and cleaner. His hood chest's a little bit different from the Cybertronian version. Car mode's a little different too, but not by much, right? Articulation's all good. Legs are a little bit loose for my liking but they're still good. He's got the blaster that came with Red Alert and the usual sideswipe weaponry. Maximal Skywarp's pretty good too. It's that same Air Razor mold that's just been done up as the Beast Wars Eagle fella, I think. Uh, or maybe it's some obscure Japanese figure. Well, whoever it is, uh, they look great in both modes, right? I've still yet to open my Kingdom Air Razor, so this is my first experience with this mold as a bird. But yeah, it's, it's okay. Everything's feeling pretty good. Nothing's loose or floppy. The eyes on the bird head are pretty weird, right? Like, look at those things. Things. Probably the strangest tampos I've ever seen. It's got optional rockets that are pretty cool, and he's got a bird-themed hoodie. So that's fun, right? Here they are with some other figures, and here they are with Rhinox. It's, pr uh, it's pretty good, right? Next up, the Mirage box. Great looking box, great looking inner box, great looking figures. Mirage first, um, so he's pretty good. I already said in another video that I think Leadfoot is the best use of this mold. Um, and I stand by that. This one's not bad, but come on. He's got some boring gray weapons and some boring gray feet. These legs definitely aren't my favorite part of the figure. They always come undone when I'm trying to articulate them in any way. It's not great. His paint and plastic are all good. His 26s are all great, and so is car mode, right? Next, we got Grimlock, and he's looking a little different than I remember him. But they did what they had to do to make it work, right? I like his off-whites and his gold plasticky plastic. It looks pretty tasty. And so does his new Grimlocky head sculpt. Well, I mean, when it came out, it was new. But I kind of opened Raw Chicken Dynamot before opening this one. So it's not really as new as I assumed it thought it would be when it was first opened. But yeah, it's, it's pretty good. He's got a tail shield and a bone sword. And they could both store on his back. Pretty good, right? His articulation's all pretty good. And his joints are all nice and tight. Dino mode looks like this. And it's, uh, pretty sweet. I really like the way his tail stripes lined up with that hinge. Nice job, guys. His dino neck and hands are pretty incredible. Here they are with some other figures. And here they are all together. Pretty good. Good, right? Pretty, pretty fun app, I think. Uh, and that's it. That's all of them I got. The Battle Across Time sets. And Rhinox. Pretty good box sets, right? Do you think they'll ever repaint this Rhinox figure? Hell, you know what? Paint it red, make it one of those Predaking guys. You know the one, right? Uh, but anyway, that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment, Instagram, Twitter. You know what to do. All right. <laughs> Bye.